Hello humans and welcome back to my channel. This channel is dedicated to raising awareness and educating about different chronic illnesses, specifically aglasia disorder, um, which is one of my diagnoses and other mental health concerns, all the things. So we're trying, we're gonna explain, expand our horizons here if I can learn to speak English. So today we have a little bit of a sciencey topic and then I'm going to make it a little more personal. I'm gonna be talking about esophageal spasms, which are something um, I struggle with a lot as somebody with achalasia type one. Um, and they really affect my life to the point where I've spasmed every day this week. So it's a little bit of raw of a topic for me today. Um, but you know, getting into the research was really, really fun this week. Cause I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's happening. So anyway, a little personal, a little raw, we're going to get scientific and then we'll have some fun. Um, just to note, this video does talk about throwing up and blood and all those gross things. So if you're freaked out by that, you might want to not watch this. Alrighty. So, esophageal spasms, um, I'll go through the symptomology, causes, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. All right, so um, I reached out to my Iglesia support group to ask what other people experience, because I know my singular, singular experience of esophageal spasms with type 1 isn't the defined version of spasms. So, people list symptoms such as squeezing chest pain, um, lots of regurgitation and vomiting, um, pain spreading from your sternum all the way into your back, into your jaw, dizziness, fatigue, loss of consciousness, um, foamy saliva, it's a gross one, it's fun, um, ear pain, shortness of breath, um, stomach pain, intestinal pain, all the pain. Anyway, um, for me personally, I struggle with all these symptoms. Um, I've never, to my knowledge, lost consciousness. A lot of times I spasm at night, so it's a toss up between did I fall asleep quickly or did I lose consciousness? I did almost pass out after my heller myotomy multiple times because my spasms were so intense, but I was also really drugged, so I don't remember much of that. Um, also, because I was so young with medical stuff and things, um, I depersonalize or struggle with dissociation when I'm in extreme bodily pain. Um, so, it often feels like I'm not in my body when I'm spasming. I'm just kind of floating on the ceiling. It's not fun. Um, so, causes, obviously, achalasia, um, abnormal functioning of the nerves of the esophagus, which achalasia is. Um, if you didn't watch my last video, achalasia is basically your esophagus is paralyzed. Um, your body has attacked the esophageal nerves. You have no peristalsis. Your, um, the upper esophageal sphincter or lower esophageal sphincter or both don't open. Um, so it's very hard to get food down, water down, spit down. It's hard to swallow your own spit. What? Um, and also spasms are caused by uncoordinated muscle contractions. Um, so there's two types of esophageal spasm spasms. Sorry, I have my notes over here, so I'm actually scientific, so that's why I'm looking over here. Um, so there's occasional and diffuse spasms, um, and those often result in pain and regurgitation, um, and those are caused by uncoordinated movements of the esophagus. If you look up x-rays of these, they're really kind of scary looking. Like, your esophagus gets, like, wiggly. It's, it's freaky. It kind of scares me a little bit to look at those. Um, and then the second type is nutcracker or jackhammer esophagus spasms. Um, so this is lots of pain, but it's coordinated movements by the esophagus. Um, so it's like, oh, I'm doing peristalsis, but really painfully. Um, so your risk for spasms without echolasia, um, most sufferers are between the ages of 60 and 80. Um, it can be caused by a GERD, high blood pressure, anxiety, food triggers, and this is extremely rare to have. Um, for me personally, my spasms are really triggered by stress, um, the anxiety, um, certain foods. <laughs> I get tr triggered by weather changes, which is a little weird, and I'm starting to think I get triggered by water intoxication, which I'll do another video on later, which is really interesting. Um, but I'm still digesting that information, so I'm not quite ready to share about it yet. Um, so 
to be diagnosed as struggling with esophageal spasms, you have to have an endoscopy, a barium swallow, or a manometry, all of the same that we use for um, achalasia diagnosis. Treatments include, not cures, treatments, um, include calcium channel blockers, tri tricyclic antidepressants, a heller myotomy, Botox injections. Um, some people also find use of peppermint oil or lozenges. Um, there's not a lot of scientific research on that. Um, chiropractic and stress management courses. Because um, if your spasms are induced by stress, um, stress management courses can also give you the tools to at least reduce the frequency of your spasms. A lot of these are similar treatments to achalasia. Um, I personally have, I think, tried the calcium channel blockers, tricyclic um, antidepressants. I felt nothing for six months, which wasn't a good feeling, um, but that was just because I was pre-diagnosed with depression and it just wasn't working with my brain. Um, I've had a Heller myotomy, never had a Botox injection before. Um, I think my esophageal sphincter looked pretty right. I'm kidding. Sorry, that was kind of rude actually. Um, I do find use with peppermint. I've never had chiropractic and I do a lot of stress management because I also have comorbid anxiety. So anyway, that's me and my experience with it. I'm trying to make it as personal as possible. Also, if you see smoke, it's my, yeah, my um, essential oil diffuser, so don't think I'm a bad person. Um, so again, with my experience, my triggers are weather, um, food, shivering, which sucks because this winter I really have to wrap up, um, stress, anger, any like extreme feeling or emotion, I probably will spasm. The funniest one was my sister is my best friend. Um, and she got me really laughing about something. I don't know what we were laughing about, but it threw me into a spasm because I was laughing so hard. Um, I don't let her forget that, which is kind of mean. Um, so I've had symptoms ranging from the chest pain and regurgitation to having my shoulder go completely paralyzed for an hour. Um, lots of throwing up, like a lot of throwing up. It's really gross um, and disassociation. Mine are quite debilitating. I'm a college student. I can't go to class. I can't do tests because I can't think through the fog. Um, I can't move I'm because I'm so dizzy. A lot of times I'm very bedridden during these spasms, so I always make sure to have what I need for a spasm next to my bed before I go to bed, um, just in case. And that includes a water pitcher, a trash can, and any medications that may or may not help. Um, so the way I cope is with my first aid kit, which I just put together, and I don't know why I just put it together, but I'm glad I've put it in one little tiny bag that I can carry around instead of just grabbing everything and throwing it in my purse or my carry-on and everything and stressing about making sure to get every little piece that I need. Hold up. Also, it's Baymax. Okay, so this is my spasm first aid kit. Um, I think I got this bag when I had an Ipsy subscription. I think it's kind of cute. It has little postage stamps of all places. I love to travel. Um, even though traveling is not fun with achalasia. Um, but anyway, it makes me happy. It's a little pink inside, which I don't usually like the color pink. So that's not part of it. I was just carrying. Okay, so I always have a barf bag because I always throw up when I spasm. And a lot of times, like, I don't have access to a trash can or a toilet. Um, especially when you're, like, in the middle class or walking. Um, so I just always make sure to have a barf bag on me. Um, I've had some unfortunate situations. Um, then I carry a blend, well, three essential oils. Um, oop, sorry. Black pepper essential oil, um, frankincense essential oil, and copaiba. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know if I am. Um, these were recommended to me by Coach Bree of Tiger Stripes Earned. Um, she is a fellow sufferer with achalasia. I was talking about a blend that helped her with her spasms, so I reached out to her and like, what is that? Please help. Um, and I do find it is effective sometimes. Um, 
some of these oils are a little expensive um, and for a pastor's kid and a college student I can't afford to take these oils every single day but I do take them as soon as I feel a spasm coming on and often they'll prevent it um, they're all anti-spasmodic oils um, all anti-inflammation and very very healing so sometimes I get a really weird like cooling sensation going down my esophagus when I take them I don't know that might just be me um, I always have some mints. These are from Thrive Market, so they're all natural, and they have all natural peppermint oil. Um, they don't have any sugar except xylitol, um, and they are vegan friendly. Um, they taste really, really yummy. My mom got these for me, um, and these often loosen my esophagus up. Um, peppermint tea also helps. Um, sometimes I have peppermint flavored Tums, especially if I know if a spasm is brought on by a soft, or sorry, acid reflux, that's what I'll use. Um, but these are really, really yummy. Um, and they freshen your breath, which is nice. Um, I always carry some anti-diarrheal. I really struggle with getting sick part two after my spasms. Um, so I always need to carry these around because it's really hard. Um, to go to classes and function when I need to use the toilet all the time. Um, so, anyway, that just really helps my symptoms. Um, yeah, that's, that's awkward, but it's the truth. Um, and then I also carry an inhaler. It's Zopinex. Um, it's albuterol. Um, I have in asthma, which sometimes triggers my spasms, but also I found that sometimes this relaxes my muscles enough. This is my last resort um, because it makes me pretty anxious and shaky, and after a spasm because of the mental repercussions because your brain is literally thrown into a trauma state every time, um, it's not always healthy for me to take this. So I take it as a last resort. This is doctor prescribed. Um, my doctor's amazing just a little side note so yeah um, that's how I cope I'm always adding to this uh, as my awareness of my disease grows um, I'm trying to get a bigger bag so I can carry around my Tums and some other things that I use for my health um, but yeah so anyway if I have missed anything about spasms that you have experienced please let me know um, let me know what your experience is like how you cope if you have any suggestions for how I can cope because I'm always look there's always some way to do things differently um and some things work and some things work some of the time and not all of the time right now um ginger ale is really helping me um but that doesn't work 100 percent of the time and sometimes stretching helps but sometimes that triggers it and so i just never know and i feel like that's part of achalasia a little, little dance routine with achalasia um so yeah but anyway, if you have any notes that I've missed about spasms or you want to talk about your experience, please let me know in the comments below. Um, also, if you have any questions about echolasia, esophageal spasms, chronic illness, etc., etc., um, I will try to answer those comments, please. Uh, you can also follow my Instagram, at Morning and Dancing. Um, oh yeah, and if you like this video, click the little like button there. I think I've never done this before and if you like to hear me talk for almost 15 minutes about chronic illness um, you like that support please subscribe to my channel um, that really helps me out helps me know like I'm actually doing something with my illness yeah anyway thanks guys for listening to me ramble um, if you're having a bad spasm week I'll be praying you feel better because spasms really suck um, actually, if you're in any kind of flare, I hope you feel better. Let me know what works for you guys. Um, have a good week. Take care of yourselves as always. Thank you.